All right, today we're going to talk about competition trimming uh, a brisket, a whole brisket. And what I have here is this is just a standard choice brisket. Got it at Restaurant Depot, weighs about 13 pounds. But I, before I busted it open and started trimming, I want to talk a little bit about it. This particular one, marked by the USDA certified Angus beef, it's a uh, you know, it's not a Wagyu brisket, but this is what most people can get and your stores will carry. I'd happen to get this one at Restaurant Depot. A few things I look for when I buy a brisket is the thickness of the flat. As you can see, this one's pretty uniform, both sides. That means I'm gonna get some nice thick cuts across this area that I'm really concerned with. And what I, and another thing, when you're looking at briskets and buying them, you can see usually through the cryovac which way this grain is running. The Closer you get it to running with the flat instead of across it, the better off you're going to be. So I always look for one that's kind of got long grain because I know that my slices are going to come from this area and then instead of you know having to shape it up more. But another thing is not not so stiff in the cryovac. Um, that tells me that the brisket's got a little bit of wet age on it. It hasn't you know it's been packed a little while and it's starting to break down. Um, sometimes you'll pick them up; they'll be stiff as a board. And they, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in if I know the pack date, I like to give it 30 days of wet age in a fridge. It's not open very often. You want to keep it nice and cold, but that, that's, um, now we're gonna, I'm gonna bust this open, rinse some of this juice off and get to trimming it. All right, now I'm just busting the cryovac. I always like to do it as a sink. It's just a little cleaner. Gives me a little water, rinse some of this juice off. But you know, when you open up a brisket out of cryovac, any, any kind of meat, it shouldn't have a strong smell. You get that smell that knocks you down, you know it's bad. This one's fine. And I'm just gonna rinse off any excess here real quick in the sink. Get it back over to the cutting board. We'll okay, go to work. Okay, now I've got the brisket out, washed and clean on the cutting board. First thing, um, I always do this before comp. This is a competition trim brisket. I'm gonna probably take off a lot more than you're used to seeing. If I was cooking this for friends and family, I wouldn't worry about getting as aggressive on this brisket. But for competition barbecue, I want to get it down to, the, to where it's going to be exactly what I need for my blind box. And I want to envision that and think about my final appearance while I'm cooking it. So the first thing I notice is I've got a couple cuts. And, you know, if you do this ahead of time, you can, you know, these aren't so bad. This one's not so bad. That one's not going to phase me where I'm getting my uh, meat from my box. But back here in the back of this flat, you'll notice I've got a pretty good deep cut. Now, I'm not taking any of my slices for a comp box back there, but sometimes if this were to happen on top of my flat, this brisket wouldn't do me any good. So that's why I say prep ahead of time. Um, so now we're gonna get into trimming it. I like to always kind of see where the grain's running, and I cut a chunk off the front to go ahead and tell me where to start slicing when I'm cooking. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm starting to think about shaping it for my box. Um, I always find where the grain's running, and I know um, about how wide the knife, it's about the knife's width. If you're not used to it, go buy you some empty boxes from Sam's and set it on this brisket and come right, you know, kind of make an imaginary line and know where to trim them. But I've done it enough times to where I know that I'm squaring this up for my box. So I do this because I want, you know, it's not required. Everybody doesn't do it. You can wait when it's cooked, but I like for my briskets to have that perfect bark all the way around it. And now what I'm gonna do is come back on this other side and go ahead and get my line going for it. And that's where I'm gonna be. And it also runs me down into some of this gray meat, which I'll take off the tip. Anything that's discolored, you wanna bring off that brisket, you can see where it's got a little age on it. But now, this is my box size right here. Now what I'm gonna do is come in and take off this big thick layer of fat here on top of this point. So I'm not gonna use it. Well first, there's a little bit of discoloration. So I'm coming right down that side to take that off. We'll deal with the point in just a second. But all I wanna do is get my flat right to where I want it for my burn ends. Now this thick fat vein, I always take it off as well.
as you can see, I've got this cut down now to box size for my flat. That's exactly what I want. This is the area of this flat that's going to go in my box. I'm going to cook it to 198 degrees, but the main area I'm going to focus on is right in here. Um, as far as the point goes, I like to come in and take off anything that's, you know, got too much fat on it, of course. I don't worry about the underside as much because it's an insulator. If there's any real thick fat, I'll come in like this area right here on this on this point. That needs to come down. It's too thick. That'll never render. See how thick, though? that's just thick fat. Anything on this flat, I'm leaving because that's going to insulate me. It's going to keep me moist and it's going to keep my juices from escaping on the bottom side. Some of it will render. Uh, I like to have just a small trim of fat on my on each slice. There's a little bit of discoloring right here that I'll take off. Maybe a little bit on this point right there. And then I'll also come in and take out some of this fat vein. Because all that's not going to render. And that's the area where underneath here where I'll get my burn ends after I get this fat broken back down off of it. I just go down to the go through the fat, go down to the meat, and come back across. It's not hard, it just takes a little bit of time. And I cut back up through. I'll come in and take out some of the fat vein that runs up under the point. It makes it easier to separate when it's cooked. Also allows me to season some of this point meat up under it where I can go ahead and start thinking about getting flavor on those ends. I just try to stay Parallel with the meat where you don't cut too deep in it. And this is just thick, kind of thick fat that needs to come off, in my opinion. I'll take it off because it don't render and then I don't want it to be on top of my burn ends. I mean, you could, if a little bit of it's left on, you can trim it off, but I want my burn ends to have kind of a bark to the top of them. By taking this off, when I come back and separate this flat, I got a better area to cut from to make my ends. That's the whole thinking behind it. I'm not slicing the point. I take the whole point and cube it after it's cooked. I'll leave some of this. Some people separate the whole thing, cook them separate. I like to leave them intact and then separate. It's easier to separate once it gets to 198 degrees. Now, since I've got this cut here, I think on this brisket, I'm gonna go ahead and just remove that because I'm not gonna be able to slice it. It's just gonna be in the way. Take a little bit of that off to make it lay down. All right, now I've got the majority of the fat taken off the top of this brisket, and I'm thinking about the box. That's the main goal here. When you're when you're uh, prepping your competition meat, you want to be 
doing your prep work to give you the result it wants in the end. The next thing that I need to do is come in and remove some of the silver skin that's on top of this brisket. Now I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to take any of this underside fat off of it because I've got my point cleaned up. I've got enough surface area there to put, make me some bark. Got enough fat off. The rest of the smaller fat that's kind of marbled through it, it'll render. But I need to get this silver skin off because that's not going to cook down. So the easiest way is just to run your knife right up under a little bit of it. Kind of raise it up and carefully trim it. You don't want to get deep. You just want to get this membrane off. And it's a little tedious. But it's not too difficult if you use a sharp knife. Some of them flats have more, some have less. It's just, you never know what, what's going to be on there until you get it broke open. But the reason why you want to take it off is because, one, it's creating a barrier so my seasonings can't penetrate the meat. Two, it could give it a bad taste that judge, you know, might, it might be a little tough or have an off texture and we just don't want that on there. All right, I got all the, the silver skin taken off the top, the majority of the fat. Um, so you can see the box, the flats trimmed exactly like I wanted. I've got all my point, the fat taken off the top. I've got plenty of surface area to make my burn ends. Um, a lot of people might say, you know, that's, that's too aggressive for a brisket, but what I'm doing is thinking about the final product. I've got my cook times down to where I know how long it's going to take me to get this flat to 198. My burn ends will be exactly where I want them. Um, I've took off probably, you know, four pounds of trimmings off a 12 pound brisket. That takes me down to about eight pounds. It's going to take about eight hours to get it cooked. Um, when I was talking about trimming it to the box size, I kind of got one to show you. For example, you can see I'm just a little bit outside of the box on the bottom. And when you open that box and have that bed of parsley in there, that flat, those slices will draw in just enough to where they complete a fill box. And that's going to give you your presentation. Uh, that's how you trim a competition brisket. That's how we do it. It's not the only way. Um, I'm not saying you have to do it like this, but give it a try. See if your scores don't improve. I promise you, mine did.